Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today, let us just talk about the game setup for the prismatic part inside Fusion 360. I just modeled this part with the help of design mode inside Fusion 360. If you look at the sketch mode and edit the sketch, you can look at the dimensions. The dimensions are 120 by 60. And I just make this simple cube with the help of 3D design inside Fusion 360. Now, actually the tutorial is about the cam setup for the prismatic pot in case of milling. Because this is a milling pot and we can manufacture this part on milling machine. So, uh, here is some confusion uh, remaining for the beginners. So, let's try out to clear out each and everything. How can you set up a part to be machined? So, let's get right into it. Once you click on the setup, then in setup, we need to define three things. The first thing is to define the manufacturing coordinate system that most probably we call it the MCS. Secondly, we have to define the body, the model that we just created inside Fusion 360. And finally, we are going to define the stock, the raw material, or we, we can call this as the blank. So, once you know all these things, I think to create setup for any prismatic part would not be really the critical issue for you. So, let's get started. Once you click on the setup, here you need to define the machine. You have to click on machine and then you need to go to the Fusion 360 library and click on the Autodesk. You can have lots of other companies' machines here available as well. You can have for the dead run, has, and many more. Then you have to pick anyone and click on select. But this time, you need to download this model. For now, I don't want to download this model as I don't need to add any machine in case of this part. So I will simply cancel this. Next, what you need to do is just to define the setup. Here, what does it mean by setup? That on which machine you're actually going to be manufactured this part or which operation actually you're going to do. Probably, I know this time I'm going to do the milling operation, I will choose the milling. Remember one thing, if you go for the turning over here, you have to choose the turning. If you go for the, uh, for the abrasive cutting, the water jet, or the laser cut, then you have to choose this option. And once you do the additive operations over here, then you need to choose the operations additive. So this time, I will simply choose the milling operation. The next thing is what actually you, you, you need to understand is just to orient this work coordinate system. But in this case, we have to, we, we, we need to know this is called the manufacturing coordinate system. And we need to reorient them, right? Why we, why, why we want to orient uh, the manufacturing coordinate system? Because you need to know in which direction and which position I will load this part and machine because the three axis machine always have the three axis to move. So, if for example, you just want to load this part in this way and machine, I'm happy because the Z must be upward, the X axis will be this direction and the Y axis will be this direction. But here I'm going to give you a simple tip always try to put your part in that direction in which the x-axis must have the minimum length. So if for example, I just want to put this model in this way, I am wrong because this is not my x-axis, this is y-axis. So I need to orient them. Right? So how I can do this, I will simply click on the orientation and I will always prefer you to select the second option because this simply allow me to orient my model, right? What I can do, I just want to flip the x-axis in this way. I will click on the x-axis and I will select this edge for now. See? The manufacturing coordinate system automatically adjusts the x-axis and y-axis for me. 
And I think if I want to load this part in this way, I will cancel this. X axis must be this one. And if I want to load this part in this way, I think I'm happy in this mode, right? So this is how you can just deal with the orientation of the model. This is nothing but just to know in which direction, in which position you will load your part on the machine. So the machine axis must be made with the manufacturing coordinate system. This always called the operator the machine zero. So once you set the machine zero, then you need to make sure you have to click on the box point. This is what actually you need that you have to just play around with the manufacturing coordinate system. Where you want to locate this? Always I will prefer to put it in the middle of the part and the top because in this case, your easiness for the operator to machine the part easier. All right. Then finally, you have to define the model. The actual model that you have just made it inside the Fusion 360 or any CAD model. Because sometimes we make models in the SOLIDWORKS or the crude parametric and set that file as IGS or STIFF file and we just bring those models inside Fusion 360 for the CAM environment. Once we click on the body, the Fusion 360 will automatically detect the actual model because the machine will leave this material and will remove the rest of the material that you have defined in the blank, in the raw material, or in the stock. If you look at the bottom, you have the fixtures option. Sometimes you have fixtures, vices, claims, jigs, so you have to select them. And then you have to fixture attachments, right? But in this case, I don't have any fixture and I would have any extra material with that I just make the mates so I'm just leaving this option for now. The next thing is just to know about this stock and this is the real option that you, you, you need to understand, right? Sometimes we can call it the blank but this is really simple to know actually we are defining the raw material, right? Because to make any model, to manufacture any model, we need the raw material. So in stock, we are going to define the stock dimensions, right? So in mode, always I will prefer you to select the relative size box in case of prismatic part. In case of cylindrical part, in case of turning, you can select the cylinder and tubes. Once you click on the relative size box, what you need to understand that you can add additional material to either on the stock side, stock top, stock bottom. Why this is? Because sometimes we have brought the blank, the raw material in such uh, dimensions in which we have the same materials offset on either sides, either top and bottom. You can go and add materials on top and bottom. Once you click on the no additional stock, this is the real option for me and really works for me. But I'm just happy in case of to define the blank is of the fixed size as my model. And add stocks to all sides. This is how you can add stocks offset to either side x positive, x negative, z negative, z positive. This option is actually give you the additional offset value. If you define it 2, these values are automatically multiplied by 2. If you define it 1, no matters because when you define 1 multiplied by 1, automatically it will come 1. For now, I'm just leaving it 0. And now these are the stock dimensions, right? Because if you look at this model from the top, see, this is the extra material that I just added right now. So 
Once you don't want to not add any material on either side, I think this is the better option for you to add the no additional stock. Because the Fusion 360 will automatically take the fixed size box blank for you. And now, this is the right dimensions. Now you can go from the solid as well. This is the better option for you. Just like this solid and the Fusion 360 will automatically detect this model is stock. But I was always preferred to use the relative size box so that you're flexible with adding materials, adding stock on either side, top, bottom, size, and on either side. So, I think no additional stock for me right now, but this just doesn't work because I'm not able to apply any operation. All right, I will add the stock on outside, and right now I will just define the this one zero, 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 and I will just add a two mm of material for my facing operation, and I'll just hit OK. But the pass processor, either you can define it right now, but always I will prefer you once you define the operation, once you define the setup, then defining the proper operations from these tools, defining the proper tool, and once you define the operations and after a simulation, you can just click on that and define the pass processor at the end. So this is how I think the really, really important tutorial for you to understand how can you define, create setup for the prismatic pots. Later on, I will talk about how can you create setup for the turning materials, turning CNC programs. So all the best, stay tuned for the upcoming tutorials and make sure to subscribe to this channel. You will find more and more lucky tutorials to understand the basic concept. Once you have the clear concept, I think defining the operations and creating the two paths is not the critical issue. Best of luck and thanks for watching.